program is hope alive yes there is hope in nigeria and the new nigeria is possible this evening as we promised coming back and telling you about the lps uh, convention that is uh, going on uh, we wish to uh, bring it to you that that convention has been done the national working committee of the lp um, uh, has been resolved and a new caretaker um, a new ones were actually uh, made possible today. So they had concluded in, in this and uh, barrister uh, Julius Abure has been returned as the, uh, uh, the, the national chairman of the Labour Party. Now, that is it. Like we said earlier in the day, uh, we are not joining issues with uh, uh, this convention or the Labour Party and the NLC saga until our principal comes to state uh, clearly on which side uh, we are going to be reporting on. And having said that, uh, again, we also want to bring you at this very hour the issue surrounding uh, Chief Bola Tinubu cares for Nigeria. That is the, what is trending right now is Chief Bola Tinubu cares for Nigeria as a result of him going for a barrier that is coming out from his uh, special advisor, Bayo Onanonga, who said Nigerians are appreciating him, liking him to uh, commissioning a project when actually people are in mourning and it is now the time to applaud uh, uh, Chibola Tinubu for attending a burial ceremony. We are going to bring that. And then we have several other things that we are going to bring and sharing this with me in the studio is a divine. Oh, well, thank you for joining us on today's episode. We're so glad to have you. Yes, as we are glad to have you, uh, we want, I want uh, uh, you to explain, go straight to the point of uh, what has been happening in Sakol. I heard that uh, the pregame, they are still wanting to spend some money or some senators are pushing Tinubu to spend more money on pregrimage while Nigeria is actually in hunger still. Well, very interesting story. Senator Ndume, who is, happens to be a majority leader in the Senate, actually called for um, increments or rather called for a subsidization on the fees of the Hajj, um, you know, pilgrimage. Well, the senator represents that sec senatorial district Mohamed Ali Ndume on Wednesday urged the Nigerian government to subsidize Hajj fees for first timers intending to go to the Holy Land. The commission handling the pilgrimage, NACON, had announced earlier that there was a new adjustment rate citing the current dollar rate of 1474 to a dollar. According to the statements by the NACON spokesperson, Fatima Sanda Usara, about 49,000 pilgrims who had earlier paid the old fees of 4.9 million each to the commission had been told to pay an additional 1.9 million each on or before March 28, while new registration had been fixed at 8.5 million. She explained that the 49,000 intending pilgrim, pilgrims under the public quota had earlier paid the sum of 49 million. However, Ndume rejected the arbitrary increase in a statement issued in Abuja on Wednesday, describing it as unfair and a deliberate plan to deny Muslims, especially first timers, the opportunity to partake in the exercise. He said pilgrims who paid the old fees could not be compelled and should not be told to cough out almost 2 million, barely one week to the end of the registration, adding that the five pillars of Islam, which he mentioned, are actually um, reasons enough for Muslims to embark on the holy pilgrimage to Mecca. He called on President Tinubu to approve the payment of the extra costs as subsidy to enable first timers to attend this year's Hajj to the Holy Land. Well, he said in quotes that the sudden hike in the fees of intending pilgrims are expected to are expected to pay by Nakon is unfair, and he said that you cannot impose such. Um, on them, they have already paid ahead on time, and that if there's any charges, the body should be on the um, cost, on the body and not on the intending pilgrims. Yeah, quickly on this very uh, this thing. At this very time that Nigeria is talking about hunger, distribution of grains and the likes, uh, this senator is actually expecting uh, uh, Chief Tinubu to now go back because we know he has approved some money that we stated some time ago. Right. And during that very time, we are emphasizing that there is so much hunger in the land, there is so much inflation going on in the economy right. that Nigeria does not need that excess expenses because people who are traveling outside the East even uh, in as much as it's pilgrimage, but it's more luxury. You understand? Right. Because they are going to fly and they are going to pay dollars, 
millions, like four point something million naira they're talking about there. Right. So uh, we are not against our own Muslim brothers going for Hajj or you know trying to exercise their faith. But the point is, going uh, uh, at their own expense would be better. Well, I mean, if you could afford 4.9 million naira at this um, current, um, you know, economic um, situation in the country and ecosystem, well, I think it is not um, very viable for you to actually come out or for Senator Dume to come out asking for some amount of subsidy on the Hajj um, cost because you decided to go for pilgrimage and you should be able to sponsor yourself. We understand that it is necessary to the Muslim faith or rather to the Islamic faith and we actually urge them to actually go, right? Because, I mean, it's, Nigeria is um, a highly religious country and it is necessary for them to seek God in different places of worship but it should be at their own cost and the government should not be expected to subsidize um, any um, you know cost that is going to um, take all the cost implications because if you can afford to go to pilgrimage at this time you should be able to fend for yourself or actually sponsor yourself because we have more pressing issues and we have um, food um, insecurity if there's anything that's going to be subsidized it should actually be on food and you know Bola Chinubu for going to um, uh, to the burial of the Nigerian military officers and soldiers who were uh, slain in Delta State. And this is happening today. As you can see from the post and the, all the actions that were going on on that very place, the uh, senior aide to Tunubu had to come out to applaud Tunubu for being uh, the, the first president in the last decade to have attended uh, this thing. And after he did that, he actually took a wipe at uh, uh, at uh, t at um, Buhari, his uh, um, the so-called APC man. This is what uh, Bayo Nonoga did, and this uh, what he said is this. At the ending, you can see it is underlined from this uh, is the first post he did, and he then um, edited or deleted this post. But we had to bring it out for our own well-meaning Nigerians to see that there, there is always a propaganda, a hype across anything that these people are saying. If you watch it, this is the, the tweet. It is confirmed that uh, Bola Tinubu will be attending the national burial for the Nigerian military officers and soldiers killed on the 14th May by some government in Kuama community in Delta State. It is the first time in the last 10 years that a Nigerian president will attend such a solemn event in honor of our men of gallantry and valor. Two other burials underlined Two other burials in 2021 and 2018 were not graced by the incumbent. We told you that at official bad cares. Now, this is what the underlying part of this is what we wanted you to get. And then you watch the, the current one where he now edited this very part and then did this. This is exactly the same thing, but he has edited out the part where his own party man, Buhari, that he indicted. But again, we want to bring it to you. Do you think that this, at the time that the nation is mourning, at the time that the flags are flying below, is it the time for this man to be shout? To be raising praises is it the time that uh, the senior head of his age in this very uh, particular listen to actually uh, do all of those let's even take a, a, a list let's take a look at um, the other things that has to deal with um, this same uh, bio ononoga yeah we have seen the first on the line we have seen the second one that he tweeted and uh, we have reactions of people uh, on um, on X platform a lot of reactions of, of what people are, are thinking especially as there is no as he's liking this to a project commissioning Chinubu did not go to uh, to, to the burial of the people as uh, as against uh, this thing 
Tunubu did not go there as a commissioning of a project. Rather, he went there in mourning. He should be there shedding tears that we have lost soldiers that he has sent there as a result of our oil that they want to protect. And we said earlier that we should also mind the issue of the people. Mourn also the people who were also uh, slain or killed in that very community. Now, let me also remind our people, that is for the Agba, those who may not understand where we are coming from. This is in uh, 20, uh, this is last year, August 25th, 2023. Buhari is already in power as a data. It was already installed. His government was already kicked. Now, this is a tweet coming from the anti Agbado who says that what makes the lives of those buried today different from those killed by terrorists in Niger State and buried in 2020 and August of 2023. Was Tunubu not president then? This is a question. And I want you to see that this is a vanguard publication of that very uh, uh, distant. The vanguard publication of uh, this thing is more than 20 soldiers. This very one we are talking about here, they are contemplating 15 or 17. But I will tell you that as at that last year, Chinubu was still in power and tears were flowing as more than 20 soldiers were buried and Chinubu did not go there. Bayo Ononoga saying that this is the first time. We want to remind them and the Agbados that this is not the first time that officers and soldiers are being killed without him attending it. So they should not turn this to become, uh, what do you call it, a project commissioning, applause and other things. This is not the time. It's a time for the national mourning, not for him to embarrass the country. Well, like you rightly said, it is time for um, national money and not time for them to make it um, some kind of propaganda to say um, um, His Excellency Chief Bola Ahmed Tinubu actually cares and all of that. Because to be very fair, I think we just celebrate a lot of mediocrity, to be honest, because he is, um, you know, sitting on the seat of president. And if he doesn't attend the burial, who is going to attend the burial? Because the truth of the matter is, he's just actually doing his duties and he should just be there in a morning capacity to actually talk about the lives that were lost and condole with the families. It's not something for us to come and start, you know, you know, giving them a round of applause or something. Because if, if, he, is, if he isn't there, who else is going to be there? He's just discharging official duties and I don't see why they expect us to, you know, sing hallelujah in his name. Okay, um, so that will be, we will get back to all of this and what happened by tomorrow uh, again. Uh, let's also um, tell you that uh, the convention, the National Convention of Labour Party, so many people are asking so many questions for all that they want us to answer. There are certain questions that definitely the Obedient Family TV may not be able to answer us at now. But it is clear that uh, it's unequivocal that... Uh, 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 Barrister Juro Sabure has been re-elected as the chairman, national chairman of the Labour Party in the ongoing convention that is happening now in Anambra State, Newe precisely. And uh, as can be seen from all the videos and the attendees, we see that uh, the National Working Committee, uh, the other, they faced one side of it out and then reconvened on the other. Now, we applaud them for their decision to go on with this very convention. We also understand that their obedience who are also against this very particular convention. We just need you to shoot your sword. We have a leader and we have somebody in the person of His Excellency P2B who we believe is going to address these issues uh, going forward. As far as Labour Party is uh, concerned, uh, we obedience um, are looking at them as a party. They are a political party and they should go on with their, uh, what, what they do. And, uh, you know, they should just go on divine or what do you have to say? Oh, like you rightly said, we have somebody we believe in his ideologies. Um, um, Labour Party is just a vehicle, to be very honest. And so whatever they decide to do should not actually, you know, determine our loyalty to His Excellency P2B. He's the person we trust. He's the person on whose mandate we are standing. So it is necessary that we wait to hear from him before we make any assumptions or make any um, claims. So basically, 
Labour Party is, at the end of the day is a political party and they're going to do what they know how to do best, which is actually play politics. He has nothing to do, or he has little or nothing to do with the excel with His Excellency Peter B and his ideology. Yes, and that is uh, to inform you also that uh, some people also will come to our timeline bringing certain questions of uh, this is happening in Anambra State, and because it's happening in Anambra State, it happens to be a Peter B team. No, it is not. It is not a P2B thing. P2B is not, uh, is not the party. P2B is a candidate just like anyone else could be on in any party. So as at this very time, I would say spare P2B uh, the distance of uh, talking to us because we believe. Last time he had an engagement and that's why he was not on the space uh, um, platform that he wanted to address obedience and well-meaning Nigerians. Of course, he did tell us that he will be making our time again to address these issues. And I believe that what will be almost on the obedient ears and waiting to be heard is uh, what P2B thinks about this very convention. But like it or leave it, it has been done. And uh, Juro Sabure has been reaffirmed as uh, at this very convention holding in Enewe Anambra State. So, uh, let's quickly, as we want to uh, quickly rush to other things we have, we have this very thing coming out from Idi Roko border where uh, Fisayo, that very investigative journalist who said clearly that customs are conniving with smugglers and this guy keeps digging deep and we don't see reactions coming out from the Nigerian Customs Service. There's no reforms, the orgas continue to be there. Uh, let's bring the, what uh, Fisai Osoyombo said. He said, uh, good morning to the customs, Nigeria. He said, I'm aware that in Idi Roko, Obe Oloko, a smuggler who was one zona chairman of the Tricycle Riders Association in the Agbara Badagri Axis, has been handed the authority, just like IBD Dende in Oja Odan, to smuggle items into the country through the Badagri Seme Road. Your officers has recognized Ope Oloko as they want to take money from all smugglers in the zone and remit custom share so that the goods can be removed, can be moved in. This arrangement is in full swing already last week when Ope Oloko imported tons of rice with his private hairlocks. He was escorted by four or five mobile policemen. Only three days ago, he smuggled more than 300 cars loaded with rice into the country. After settling custom officers, Nigerians like to know, will the Nigerian Custom Service ever push for the legitimation of rice importation? Considering the shortage of quality rice in the country, or will you continue profiting from the, this rice, uh, rice black market at the expense of the local economy? Wow. Our thoughts goes out to this Nigerian customs. Is it every time this man will expose you and come out and talk? If you don't come to uh, Obedient Family TV, go to channels, go to Arise. Go and tell Nigerians that it's not true. Because now we see it's true. And it's happening. And nobody, we've talked about the uh, IBD then day. Seems like nobody, nobody responded. Even Arise talked about it, uh, um, Channels talked about it, and this administration continued to be accomplice to smugglers. And it's not just about smuggling rice and other things, the same way they smuggle ammunitions. Well, um, it's just really an unholy silence um, coming from the Nigerian Customs Service because at a time like this, if you're, the integrity of an institution is actually being questioned like this, continuously and not just once this man has actually come out in various ways made different series of tweets matter of fact he has never ceased to actually buttress his point that the nigerian custom service is actually you know infected by people who actually um, prioritize their selfish needs over the collective good of the um, country through smuggling both rice and arms and whatever it is. And so their um, integrity is actually in question. He has put it out for the world to see. And then this silence coming from them just is an admission of guilt. That is what I see. And in, the, in his last investigative report, he indicted even Chief Bola Tunubu. Right. It, it, these things, I don't, was, is it that people say things and then no investigation is done? He mentioned the names of this individual. He states where they are staying. If somebody alleges, 
something. At least an investigation needs to be held. You understand? So that people will understand that, yeah, this is a country that's, that has hope in, in terms of this administration. But anyway, the administration like uh, Kenneth Okonkwo will say, we say, we say it's a renewed hopelessness. But all the same, I think that is where we will uh, get for today until tomorrow when we come your way. But hey, I will not forget to mention the Obedient Family Cooperative Society. That I will not forget. It's a promise that I give to the obedience. Register your Obedient Family Cooperative Society wherever you are. There are people who are volunteering to pay for the registrations of these in various local governments. Do reach us on the number that is on the description of this very video. We can show you samples of what registrations has come in. There is a registration uh, certificate that you can see on the screen. And that very certificate simply tells you that registration has commenced. Wherever you are, whichever state you are, go to your local government and ask them how you can register Obedient Family Cooperative Society. Make sure that uh, you people are up to 10 people that are in that cooperative society and then you can take it off from there. But um, Divine, before we go, it, quite frankly, many people always assume that it's only when you come to, uh, during campaign time, that you form, um, what do you call it, support groups. Because anytime you come, you say, I, I have support group, I have base, I have this, I have that. But now they are being told to go to their local government and register officially a cooperative society that is for the obedience, a place where they could be mobilized to do whatever they want to do that has an accounting process and they are having difficulties in going to their various local government. But more applause to those people who had actually taken it up to them to go and do. And of course, as you send in uh, the list of the items and those local government and we contact them, we will send you the funds to make these payments and make sure that you are registered. Once you are registered and we have our meeting that is done every Saturday by uh, 7 p.m., that are the visual meetings that we have. Of course, the people who you see every time we volunteer to support this very cooperative so that we can be together redefining our options for 2027. Until tomorrow again, we come your way. Bye for now. Uh, so we are sorry to interrupt uh, the news. The president has arrived at the burial ceremony of uh, the 17 army personnel killed in Okwama Community Delta State, which is uh, currently on the way in Abuja. Uh, the president has uh, promised to uh, give uh, these uh, fallen heroes national honors and is expected to, you know, uh, pay his last uh, respect to the, this uh, fallen heroes today. Uh, let's not forget uh, that uh, this 17 military personnel in Delta State, uh, in Okwama community in Ugeli South, a uh, little government area of the state, were murdered alongside uh, two majors, uh, one captain and 13 soldiers uh, of the battalion on uh, the 14th of March. Uh, the soldiers who were responding to a distress call following trouble within uh, these communities uh, were murdered and uh, they are said to have been ambushed by Rita Youth who during a communal clash over a land dispute in uh, Bumadi and uh, Okwama community. Uh, these are live pictures from the burial ceremony in Abuja, we expect uh, the president uh, to be seen any time from now uh, to pay his uh, last respect to this fallen heroes. And live on your screen is uh, the president, Bola Tunubu, live at uh, the burial ceremony of uh, these fallen heroes. His Excellency Bola Ahmed Tinubu, President and Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces, Federal Republic of Nigeria. Your Excellency, you are heartily welcome to this solemn event.
Please shall we all rise for the national anthem. Thank you.